Hi, this is Salman Lalana and Manos Berlakis presenting case 157 for the manual of percutaneous coronary interventions. This is a case of stent under expansion that required extreme measures to achieve a successful expansion of the stent. The patient was a gentleman with a previous PCI to the LAD two years prior who came in with a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, borderline low ejection fraction, and then he did have um, severe disease on angiography. These are the previously placed stents into the LAD. There's an area of under expansion that is actually visible even on fluoroscopy. There is also significant left main disease. Different views showing the severe narrowing of the distal left main at the bifurcation and showing again the significant under expansion of the proximal LAD stent. Whereas the right coronary artery had some uh, filling defects in the proximal and mid segment. The patient uh, received uh, a balloon pump and was sent to the unit for evaluation by cardiac surgery. However, after uh, the discussion with the heart team and discussion with the surgeons, a decision was made to proceed with percutaneous coronary intervention. So the next day, the patient came back to the cath lab. He did have uh, an uh, FFR angio of 0.73 in the right coronary artery, and this was uh, successfully stented with a 3 by 38 millimeter stent that provided a nice result. We then switched our attention to the left. We wire both uh, the LAD as well as the circumflex, and then uh, perform intravascular ultrasound that showed the distal left main lesion. We then uh, tried to predilate. However, despite going at high pressure, 28 atmospheres, we were unable to expand the proximal LAD stent. We then switched to intravascular lithotripsy and did uh, several pulses with a 3.0 and then a 3.5 millimeter shockwave balloon. However, this did not do it. We did not have expansion. We then used a 3 millimeter angioscalped in a 3.5 millimeter NC, once again, we could not expand the proximal LAD lesion. So after multiple attempts, we decided to just stand the left main, given it was severely narrow. So we placed a 4 by 18 millimeter stand, jailing the circumflex, having wire in the circumflex, as well as the ramus branch. And then did proximal optimization with a 5 millimeter NC balloon. And uh, this provided a nice result in the left main. There was no significant disease uh, into the circumflex or the ramus branch. So we decided to stage uh, PCI of the LAD because at the time we did not have access to the very high pressure SIS OPN balloon. So the patient came back a week later to treat the proximal LAD stand under expansion. This is the intravascular ultrasound. And uh, we see that uh, we have a very narrow, heavy calcified ring in the proximal LAD. The area was 2.43 millimeters square. So we went straight to the OPN balloon, 3 millimeter balloon inflated up to 50 atmospheres, 5.0, but unfortunately no expansion. We then we're debating what to do. We decided to do orbital atherectomy. So we did uh, multiple passes going very slowly at uh, both 80,000 RPM and 120,000 RPM. But despite that, we can still see we did not have expansion within the stand. We then decided to use laser with simultaneous contrast injection. So this is a 0.9 millimeter laser. And we did multiple passes, injecting contrast while we were activating the laser at 8080. But despite that, once again, we did not achieve expansion of the LED stand. So what to do next? We decided to do rotational atherectomy. The other thing we we're considering is to go extra plaque and then go outside the area of under expansion and then re-enter further distally. However, this was likely to go, going to be very challenging because of the stand expansion extending proximally and distally. So we decided to go with a 2 millimeter bear. The reason for the 2 millimeter bear is to minimize the risk of uh, having bear entrapment. We were concerned if we were using a smaller bear, we might be able to get the bear through, but the bear might get stuck and not be able to come back. So with the larger bear, we were much more certain that we were not going to have any bear entrapment, plus we would aggressively modify the lesion and help with expansion. 
So we tried uh, at uh, 160,000. That did not do much. Then we increased it up to 200,000 RPM. We see that uh, uh, we're making some progress, but still the bear will not go through. And then we finally increased it to 225,000 RPM. And the total rotablation time was 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 23 seconds. Actually, the actual crossing of the bear happened at um, 9 minutes and 52 seconds. So it took a long time. We did runs of approximately 20 to 30 seconds in duration. The patient did remain stable through this. He did have some chest discomfort. This is the moment where the bear went through, but actually tolerated well without EKG changes. But to our surprise, even after going through this cycle of rotablation, we were still not fully expanded. It's better, but not fully expanded with the balloon. So we then used a 3.5 millimeter OPN balloon at 50 atmospheres, and this time the stand successfully expanded. This is seen in geographically. We have a nice result now, good flow into the LAD, a nice expansion. And this was also confirmed by intravascular ultrasound. We no longer have this uh, napkin ring into the proximal LAD. Uh, we do have a much bigger lumen um, into the proximal LAD. There are several lessons from this case. The first one is that stand at an expansion is a big problem. So prevention is key. A stand should not be placed until after we confirm that the lesion is well expanded with uh, balloons. In this case, uh, it would be much easier to do a thorectomy or other plaque modification before we had actually placed the stand in. But if, uh, despite all our attempts, we do have a stand under expansion, then there are multiple modalities that can be used. Usually, the algorithm starts with a high-pressure balloon inflation with a non-compliant balloon, and then uh, often we'll use a plaque modification balloon like the angiosculpt or the scoreflex, but those failed in this case. The next step lately is becoming more and more to use intravascular lithotripsy, but this was unsuccessful despite using two balloons. Another option is the recently available very high-pressure balloon, the OPN balloon, which also failed in this case despite going up to 50 atmospheres. Then we did laser, we did orbital atherectomy that didn't work, and eventually rotational atherectomy was successful in expanding it. If this had failed too, the last resort would have been to go extra plaque and then re-enter further distally, then crush the lesion from the outside. The key to success in this case was persistent, but also combining several modalities. It took 10 minutes of rotablation going up to 225,000 RPM, which is quite fast, much more than doing in most lesions, to be able to get the bear through, and that was the pivotal moment. But even after doing that, we still had to inflate at 50 atmospheres with the open balloon to be able to achieve a nice final result. So persistence, combination of various modalities can be very useful for success. When rotablating through stents, of course, we're uh, very concerned and we look very carefully for EKG changes because there can be distal embolization. But this patient did tolerate fairly well the um, rotational therectomy runs. And in his case, it was of paramount importance to achieve uh, um, a good result because this was a proximal LAD that if uh, it remained uh, under-expanded, could be predisposed to stent thrombosis with potentially catastrophic outcomes. Thank you.